So in this video, I'll be going over the basics of logging in Python. Python already comes with a logging module built in to report problems and progress of your application. So let's take a look at that module. So we have to import logging. And let's see what the module gives us. So there are five main log levels. There's the debug, the info, the error, the warning, and the critical. And these have their own static values in this module. The functions that we're most interested in is basic config to configure our logger and also the get logger, which instantiates our logger for us. So let's take a look at the basic config by doing help. So you can see the configuration options that we have. We have the file name, so the output file that we want the logs to go into. There's also file mode, which is A by default, which means append. So that'll just add the logs into the file every time we run it. There's also W, which will overwrite the file every time we run the script. There's also format, which changes the output string of the log. There's also the level option, which gives us a way to configure which logs we actually want to show. So let's go ahead and configure and create a logger. So let's create a new file. So let's start off by importing the logging module like that. And let's configure the logger. And we do that using the basic config function that we saw earlier. We want to give the output file a name. So we give that example.log. And we also want the file to be overwritten every time we run the script. So we'll do file mode equals w. And that's all we'll configure for now. And let's create the logger so that we do that by doing the get logger using the get logger function. So logger equals logging dot get logger. So if we don't pass get logger anything, we get the root logger. So we're just gonna get the root logger for now to keep it simple. Now let's test the logger. I'm just gonna paste all the log levels. So you can see that I'm logging at debug, info, warning, error, and critical levels. So let's save that and give that a run. Invalid syntax, oh, I'm missing a comma here. So let's try that again. And there we go, so it's run the script and it's also created our example.log file here. So if we check that out, so we can see it's logged the warning error and critical levels. But if we look at the script, we've also got debugger info that don't show up in the log file. And that's because the default log level is set to warning. So only show warning and anything more important than that. So the importance level is debug is the lowest, then there's info, and then warning, error, and critical. So if we want to show all of them, we can set the level here to debug. Let's save that and give that a run. So now if we check our example.log level, we can see that we now have debug, info, warning, and critical. Now if we want to change the format of our output, we can also do that. So let's go to our script again. And in there, let's create our log format. So for the log format, we have various options. So the ones that we're interested in is the message that we pass it. 
the log level itself and also the time the log was created. So let's create the output format with those three things in there. The log level, the time it was created, and then followed by the message itself. So let's just split this up as well with some dashes. Like that. And once we've created the format, we have to pass the format in. So we do format equals and then block format. So if we save that and run that again, if I now look at the example.log, we can see that we have the log level, which is debug, we have the time and the message as well. Now that we have our log configured, let me just get rid of this test logger and let's log a simple script. So I'm just going to paste the script in. So this is just a simple program that adds two numbers. So I start off with logging with an info level indicating that the script started and then I call the function add with two and three and in the function I log at the debug level with the parameters that are passed in and the function just returns the sum of both the numbers. I've got this return in a try and accept. So the try and accept, what that does is basically catches any exceptions that occur. So if there's any errors, it will catch that rather than closing the program. So if it does catch an exception, I've got it to log an error. And I'm using the dot exception method here. So the dot exception method logs at error level by default, but it also gives back the stack trace of what the error was. So let's give that a run. And if I look at the example logs, we can see that it's logged the script started and it's adding two and three and then the script finished without any errors. Now let's pass the function something that it's not expecting. So let's pass it a string and let's run that and see the output now. So let's run that successfully. If we look at the logs though, we can see that it started the script and it's adding two and six, but something went wrong. And you can see that that has been logged at an error level. And it's also given back a trace of what went wrong. And you can see that the reason why it couldn't add two and six is because six was a string and you can't use the sum operator with two different types. But because we're catching the exception, it still finished the script and logged the info script finished. So that's a quick look at logging. So once you start writing applications, logging will be very helpful to find problems in your code or track processes in the code. If you have any questions about logging, leave them down in the comments below. And next time I'll be looking at recursion.